It's time to build a PC that plays to AMD's strength. AMD has always been renowned for making good price to performance or good lower quality goads like cheap like this eight quad core processor is fifty pounds. If you wanted an AM um, an Intel quad um, quad core processor, you're looking at one hundred and fifty pounds. So price to performance and things like that, that is what AMD is good at. So this build comes with quad core processors, as I said, eight gigabytes of RAM, terabytes of storage, a nice R9 380 just splashed out in there, a nice case, but a case is really your personal opinion, 500 watt power supply, 1080p um, monitor, and mouse and keyboard for £550 roughly. That is not a bad deal at all. So let's kick things off with the processor. As quoted here on the Amazon page, affordable performance and that's exactly what this gives this gives quad core a quad core processor with four physical cores for under 100 pounds under 60 pounds for instance this comes clocked at 3.7 gigahertz of has four megabytes of l2 cache has a 95 watt tdp amd processors always have a higher tdp always consume a bit more power and have more cache i tend to find but i don't I can't go into much specifics about this processor, all I know is it's got, well, as you can see here, it's got tons of good reviews. When you see a, if you're looking at reviews to base whether you should buy something on Amazon or not, always look at whether it's loads of 5s and 1s, because if it's like that, that means there's quite a few fold products, whereas it's like this, where it's more 5s and 4s and then just a couple of 3 and 2s and no 1 stars, it means that it's not going to be a faulty product, it's just people have different variations of how good it is. So let's move on to the motherboard, shall we? The motherboard for me has always been the hardest part of a build because there's no really go-to ones that I find. So when I saw that this one was reduced down in price, I jumped at it. This is the Gigabyte Loads of Numbers and Letters motherboard. Um, can support 32 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. You won't need more than that. Um, has a FM2 Plus socket, which is RP, uh, which is our CPU. And the £47 comes with enough bells and whistles to make this good in its price range. RAM, as I've always said, is about finding your most reputable brands, seeing which just the cheapest, and then going with that. And at the moment, it's the HyperX Fury 8GB kit, as you can see here. It looks very nice. I like it a lot. It looks it has a nice look to it. You can have it in different colours as well when the price changes a tiny bit. It's 100% factory tested, so it's reliable. And for £33, you really can't get cheaper for DDR3 memory. I have a couple of things that I always turn to in builds. And this is one of them, the Western Digital 1TB hard drive. Caviar Blue, my brother has one on his PC, and it works a treat. It's a lot faster than my hard drive. I have no idea what I'm doing with it. So, for mass storage, this is always the way. If you want to throw in a 120GB SSD boot drive, you can get one for about 35 40 quid. So that's always an option to bump up to £600, but at this price range with this, I really would invest it. To me, personally, this hard drive I find is actually pretty fast. They'll load up my brother's PC and get onto the homepage rather snappy. So I don't think an SSD would be too needed. I'm not going to say this is this has got the performance of an SSD. Of course it hasn't. It's a hard drive. But it does go... It does. It's a really fast hard drive, and I personally think that adding another 40 quid is not worth it when this hard drive is perfectly fine and is actually quite fast. The graphics card can be one of two options. You can either go with the AMD R9 380 or the 280. The difference is the 280 comes with 3GB of RAM if I remember correctly and it's probably about I think it's about £10, £15 cheaper and they're based really on the same architecture but this one has slight improvements so I'd always go with the newer version. Because you're only going to be playing this at 1080p, I doubt you're going to be needing more than 2GB of RAM if you're into massively modding things and you spend an extra £20 and get the 4GB version. But I wouldn't at this moment in time. Let's move on to the case. The case is always something that is more personal opinion than everything I find. Now, when I saw that this has really good reviews on Amazon, you can see 136, most people rating 5 and 4 stars. I went with what people find good. So this is the Corsair 200R. I've stepped away from my conventional NZXT because I've noticed that this is a lot more good reviews. Has two side um, intakes for fans. Has two at the front and two at the top. Should have perfect airflow. This is really the maximum GPU length is 320 millimeters, so 30 centimeters. 
has front panel USB 3.0, which is always actually, I find, rather handy, and enough for four hard drives and four SSDs. Corsair, always personally for me, I always go with the Corsair Power Supply over everyone else. Or I'll go with an EVGA if they've got a special offer on or if they're offering a gold one for the same price. But the minute they're not, so we're going with the 500 watt 8 plus bronze certified Corsair Builder Series. This for £50, you can't really get much better than this. It's, it's modular, which means you can take some other cables out and stuff. So, 50 quid, you can't really get better than that. For me, with any build, there's all, you always need spare fans, and I always buy two Corsair Air Series. I either go with this or the LED version. Um, they're low noise and high pressure. These fans tend to run at between 1150 and 1500 RPM, so they're not sucking gallons of air in, but they are extremely quiet for what they do. And sometimes, if you're having a build which, like this build, where things really won't get too hot because what you'll find is the lower end stuff doesn't really get hot, especially with aftermarket coolers, your graphics card won't get above 60 degrees or so, your CPU won't get above 60 degrees. So you can exchange a little bit of a little bit of heat for saving noise, and this is what these do perfectly. These are almost silent, so this will make sure that you will have a silent game experience because you don't really want to have turbines winding up <laughs> my PC. When you're playing a game, this is why I'm getting some of these actually for my own PC because my one just just goes up to like 3,000 RPM and I can hear it over everything. So 22 pounds, I recommend these. If you want to go with some Noxia ones for a little bit more money, I I would recommend them, but not at this price point. These are much better. The monitor is always difficult because at this price point, including it in a build is quite difficult. But we're going to include it anyway. This is a 21 and a half inch 1080p monitor by M. Um, ben Q, two milliseconds off, and with a glossy back and stuff, it looks pretty. It's pretty good. There's nothing really much to say about it. My brother's a 28, um, 27 inch version. If you want to step it to a 24, it's another 15 quid. But just depends. If you want to go for a, a higher Hertz panel, 144, wouldn't recommend it with this. Nor would I recommend 44p. But if you'd rather have a bigger panel, the 24 one is there. As I always say, mouse and keyboard is nearly entirely personal preference and that's how I find it so cooler master devastator set with the UK layout is for 30 quid if you don't want to fiddle about trying to find what's best this is this is one of the things that will be good for you um, if you want me to recommend some other things I have a Logitech no not Logitech a Gigabyte M6900 I've had it for a year and a half now it hasn't let me down a single time um, and I've had it for two years now it's really good and it's only about $20 uh, keyboard wise, um, there's a lot of great options. Um, if you really want to spend a lot, there's the Cherry MX keys, but not really. But for the price point, I think this is really good actually. So there you have it a PC that will play at 1080p, high to maybe ultra settings, no problem at all. And with a little bit of expandability, but not a lot, you can throw another 8 gigabytes of RAM and SSD, upgrade the graphics card if you need to. I'd probably upgrade the CPU first though. So. If you're an AMD fan, this is a build tailored around AMD strong points. So I hope you've enjoyed. If you found this build or if you need other builds, send them my way. I'll give an opinion on them. Just to let you know, if you send me a build, perfectly fine. I'll take a look at it. But I am not a technical expert. I can't say why something's better. I can tell you from someone who watches, who has a, a bit of hands-on experience, who is enthusiastic about this thing's my opinion. And up to a degree, I'm normally right, but I would take my opinion with a grain of salt. If you're looking to build your own PC, I would check out, send it to five or ten people, get their opinion, then see which, um, if they're all like saying the same thing or roughly the same thing, and then look on Amazon, which is where I go, and look at the reviews and see if they're good, and then watch actual individual reviews before making your decision. So I hope this has helped. Hope if anyone builds this build, please let me know. I probably won't. Hope you have a good day and I'll see you very soon with another build.